the son of Naphtali, were Yaziel, Guni, Ezer, and Shalim. These were the sons of Bilhah. So now we're getting into the maidservant of uh, Leah, okay, his daughter, and she bore to Jacob seven persons in all. All the persons who went to, uh, with Jacob to Egypt who came from his body, besides Jacob's sons, wives, were 66 persons in all. And the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. Okay, well, if we go to, um, where is it, Acts chapter 7, and it says, um, Abraham, where is this Moses, um, calf idol, before that it says, um, oh, where are you? I know it's right in here somewhere. It went 40 years out of his house to children of Israel. Where, okay, so if you go to 714, it says, And Joseph sent and called his father Jacob and all of his relatives to him, 75 people in all. So it sounds like there's a contradiction, 70 and 75. I don't have the information right in front of me, but there's not a contradiction. If you count it up, if you go by the proper uh, reading of it, it actually is correct. And I, I can't remember how it goes, but there's people that have done these studies and will verify that 75 and 70 are not a contradiction. Yes? Is, is Joseph and his two sons being counted? Yes, that was, uh, where was that? that we just read that. Um, uh, okay, all the persons who went with Jacob to Egypt who came with him from his body besides Jacob's sons, wives were 66 persons, and the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob were 70 because you have the 66 plus Joseph, his wife, and his two children. So that comes out to 70. But there is a way of reconciling this. And it's not hard. I just don't have it in front of me right now. But I just don't want you to think at some point you read some commentary and it says, well, there's a contradiction. It's the same thing with the number of people at the, uh, the, the incident of Peor, at the end of uh, the book of Numbers, uh, the Midianites sent, remember the guy Balaam that sends, uh, he's asked to come down and curse the people of Israel and instead he blesses them. And in one day, a certain number of people died. The number in the account numbers is not the same as the number of people that died in uh, the book of Acts, chapter 7. And as I said, Acts chapter 7 has more information in it for the New Testament referring back to the Old Testament than anything. It is the most wonderful passage. And people try to find these errors, but there aren't. What it says is, I think it says there were 13,000 people that died uh, in numbers. But it says in the book of Acts, 14,000, maybe it was 14,000 in numbers, 13,000 in a single day in the book of Acts. In other words, more people died the next day. It's not a contradiction. You just have to understand what is being said. Anyway, and you'll see this in the book of Acts as you're reading differences between the Old Testament and the New, but they are all not only reconcilable, but when you see how they're reconciled, it's beautiful. It, it is really marvelous. So I just wanted to point that out because... At some point, you're going to come across somebody that's going to say, well, there's an error here, or there's an error there. There are no errors. It is that we need to do the study to understand why this is the way it is. And like I say, I don't have it in front of me, but yes, they are reconcilable. And not only that, but it makes a beautiful picture. Okay? So, my, my yes. My Bible says the number is 16 persons, and then over here it says S-E-B-E-N persons. Why is where, where is that? Well, my... In uh, 18, 18. 46, 18, at the end it says, the number 16 persons. Okay. What does yours say? 16. The number 16. Right. Oh, I go to 25. Okay. The end of that one. Oh, okay, well, that's a different wife. The 16 is of the, uh, where was that? Uh, 18. These were the sons of Zilpah, okay, <laughs> who Laban gave to Leah. So that is the so maidservant. So that doesn't count in the total? They all count. If you add up all of the names that you have here and the numbers, it'll come out to what it says here, 70. All of these will come out to the number 70. Well, why does it say 7 and not number 7? Oh, I don't know. That's just translator's decision. What does yours say? It says 7. S-E-V-E-N. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, you're saying that yours says 16, 1, 6? Yes. Oh, the reason why is because... Normally, when people translate or write in the English language, any number above 10 is written in the, the, the numeric form. Any number below 10, 1 through 10, is written out. Now, in my Bible, they follow the British tradition, which is writing out the whole number. Okay? Right. But that is why that is the way it is. That's probably the NIV, or what, what version is that? 
Oh, the Holman, but what, what is the, the version? CSB maybe? or Holman Christian Standard Bible. CSB, okay. So they're following the American tradition where any number below 10 is written out. Unless there are exceptions. If you have two numbers in a sentence, like um, uh, there were five donkeys and six goats, you would write out, I'm sorry, you would... Uh, 12 goats. Right. Well, yeah. Well, whatever you would do, you would write it different. There are exceptions. English, American English is complicated in the way we write numbers. And the reason why I know this, I, it's not that I'm smart about it. It's just that, you know, that's what we had to do for our seminary is when we do a report, you have to follow the American English way of doing it. And I just remember if you had it written out one way, they'd give you a mark off. If you had it written out the other way, it would be correct. So if it's... Um, yeah, anyway, that's the way that... Oh, okay, here is it. If you're writing... I, I just remembered exactly. If you were writing a sentence and you say, there are six, there are six um, horses. Okay, you spell out six because it's less than ten. You would do it that way. But if you said there are, there are six horses and five donkeys... In that case, you don't write them both out because they're saying that it's a waste of time to do that. And you're also having a, a sequence of numbers in a single sentence. But if you said there are six horses, period, there are five donkeys, then you would spell out six and five. Okay? Yeah. In a single sentence, though, with more than one, you will change it to the numeric in American English. Okay? But that's why that is. I see what you're saying. But if it's above the number 10, 11 on, then you would always use the digits rather than writing it out. Whereas the British English usually spells everything out. I mean, you know, it just gets a little tedious, but that's the way they do it. Anyway, um, so we finished up um, 70 persons and all. Anybody, please, uh, 4628. Now Jacob sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to Goshen. When they had arrived in the region of Goshen, Joseph had his chariot made ready and went to Goshen to meet his father Israel. As soon as Joseph appeared before him, he threw his arms around his father and wept for mm. a long time. Oh boy. Israel said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen for myself that you are still alive. Unbelievable. What, what, a, what a beautiful, beautiful account we're reading. I mean, it's just so, it's so tender and so wonderful. Oh, okay, please, go ahead. Oh. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and speak to Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were living in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds. They tend livestock, and they have brought along their flocks and herds and everything they own. When Pharaoh calls you in and asks, What is your occupation? You should answer, Your servants have tended livestock from our boyhood on, just as our fathers did. Then you'll be allowed to settle in the region of Goshen, for all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Okay, so you see, it was already decided we're going to send you to Goshen because it's the best place for you, but this will convince Pharaoh that it's the right thing to do because he doesn't want shepherds hanging around in Memphis or wherever he's at, right? He wants them down out of his way. So it's working out for the best, and Joseph was no dummy. We see that all the way back from the beginning. You know, he was no dummy. Are you leaving, Lil? Yeah, I gotta go to work tomorrow. All right, have a wonderful evening, afternoon. Get some rest. Good to have you here. I can call you and make sure you're sleeping. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you call at 12, I'll call at 1, okay? <laughs> Who wants 2? Uh, okay. <laughs> See you later now. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay, 47, please. Joseph went and told Pharaoh. My father and brothers with their flocks and herds and everything they own have come from the land of Canaan and are now in Goshen. He chose five of his brothers and presented them before Pharaoh. Pharaoh asked the brothers, What is your occupation? Your servants are shepherds, they replied to Pharaoh, just as our fathers were. They also said to him, We have come to live here a while because the famine is severe in Canaan and your servants' flocks have no pasture. So now... Please, let your servants settle in Goshen. Okay, real quickly, I want to go back to where he said um, he took five men from among his brothers and presented them to Pharaoh. Once again, I was, you know, and I don't know why I even used to watch this guy, and I just can't anymore because I get so angry at him. But once again, John Hagee, he took that and 
he, he used it saying that um, uh, only a certain group of Christians are going to be raptured. They're only, only a certain group of them because, listen, if you've called on the name of the Lord Jesus, you're a saved believer, and you're going up, even if you don't believe in the rapture, you're just going to be more surprised than the rest of us, right? <laughs> but he, he, you know, I, I'm not sure what the agenda is when somebody says things like this, but it, it must be, you're getting the secret knowledge in this church, so don't leave this church because, you know what I'm saying? He's like trying to have some type of authority over his people, which... They're already sheeple in that church, as far as I'm concerned, because they're not reading their Bible. They're, right. they're, they're not people that are going to say, I disagree with this guy. He is very, what, what's the word when you're real uh, uh, strong personality? Uh, um, there's a word, but anyway, he, he has that, charismatic. well, charismatic, but do, dominating is the word I was looking Yeah, he's a dominating authority figure, and so the people there Although he's very good speaking about America and how great America is, he diminishes the work of Christ. He exalts the Jewish people when they should not be exalted. And I'm not saying that Israel, we're not to support Israel. We should. But we are to call a spade a spade. If a Jewish person is not saved, they are not saved. John Hagee puts them in a separate category for salvation. I mean, he is not a good biblical teacher. And... I'm not even sure about his own salvation if he can say some of the things he says. But I'm not going to question it. You know, he's got to face the Lord with his own issues. But for him to say something like that about a certain number of people are going to be accepted and the others aren't, there is one dividing line in the church, and that is Jesus Christ. Either you are his or you aren't. And there's no, uh, I'm going to show favor to these five and not to these seven. That's not going to happen. That is not the God of the New Testament where it says, if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. There are repercussions for not following the Lord. We're going to hear about that in the book of Corinthians in the next few weeks as we go through that book. But as a matter of fact, I'm just going to read it. I'm, my sermon, whenever we get to chapter 5, is going to be my sermon. You don't have to turn there. But I'm going to read you why Seth emailed me and he says, we're going to be starting a series on 1 Corinthians. And Pick out any chapter you want and you speak on. I said, I didn't have to. I, it took two seconds for me to say, I want to speak on 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And it's because of one particular verse, but I'm going to lead up to it. It's verse 5 is the verse, but I'm going to read starting with 1. It is actually, and Seth talked about this a little yesterday. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. And such sex, sexual immorality is this not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. And are you puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from you? For I indeed, as absent in body, but present in spirit, have already judged, as though I were present, him who has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together with my spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. He's saying he is going to suffer in this life so that he can be saved on the day of the Lord Jesus. He's a saved believer. We don't want him in the fellowship, but we don't want him to suffer anymore and other people to be led astray by him. And I use that verse continuously when I'm talking to people about salvation. It's eternal despite ourselves. We do stupid things. If I was an alcoholic, I come to Jesus, I give that up, and then I go back to alcoholic drinking, what's going to happen? I'm going to end up killing myself. Deliver such a one over to Satan that his Body will be destroyed, but his spirit saved on the day of Christ Jesus. And that is what he's saying there. And for John Hagee to say something about five people and not the other, I don't know how you could read that into this passage. So five of them were selected to go down to meet Pharaoh and the other seven weren't. Who cares? You know, maybe there's a parallel, but it's certainly not salvation and it's certainly not the rapture. Okay? Anyway, John I just... John Hagee just got off for that, uh, in Rome with the ministry. Oh, did he? Sure did. Did he really? I, I got to tell you what, and that doesn't surprise me a bit. He's, he's arrogant. He is, you know what, I, 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 I'm not happy about it, but I'm, I, I just feel vindicated in my soul that this guy that so many people cling to is exposed for the person that he really is. I, the arrogance of that guy and the way that he treats his congregation and they sit there, like I say, let me baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. And everybody's going, oh, oh, I've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you can just see the fear in their faces. Like, he's got control over these people. That doesn't surprise me a bit. 
Yeah. When did you hear that? How long ago? Uh, about three weeks ago. 